if you find yourself in that group, I wanna help you transition to the next group because the next group is gonna be the one that closes regardless of what group the consumers are in, whether they're, whether they're uh, frugal or they're conservative or they're just the neighborhood hood rats. And so these particular type of salesmen, they don't ask. What they do is they, they're more focused on bringing value. Get it? Completely different approach. Completely different. And so why they are more effective is because they understand that consumers are already being asked of so many things. What's up everybody? In this episode, we're gonna play a game. You and I. We're gonna play a game called That's Like Me. <laughs> and so I, the way to play this game is you have to listen to this video the entire way through and one of the two, you're going to say, oh, that's like me. And how you ultimately play the, the final piece of this game is you need to comment below. And if, I, if, if you relate with one of these two, you have to hit that like button and I want you to play this game with other people on your sales floor, other people you know, by simply taking the link of this video and sharing it with them and let them know, you know, say, hey man, let's play this game. But the reason why I came up with this game is because it's very helpful to identify which one of the two is like you. Because when you identify which one of the two is like you, that's one major piece in unlocking your potential with regards to trying to, you know, close deals and make more sales, which ultimately provides you with more income, more success, more opportunities, more recognition. The list goes on and on, right? And so this game is going to be not only helpful, but it's also fun to play because you're going to relate with one of the two. You ready to play? Let's do this. Now, before I play this game, let me remind you, you know, I'm not only on this channel, you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you know, Twitter, wherever you're following or wherever you're currently uh, finding your time, your, your time being spent on, look me up at Sales Remastered or search hashtag Sales Remastered and follow, subscribe, hit the notification bell wherever you do find me. And definitely please comment helps me in return. So now let's get to the game. So the reason why I wanted to come up with this game is because if you're in sales and and I'm, I'm most likely sure you are because sales is everything we do. Sales is communication as a whole, right? Like you don't necessarily need to sell a product for profit or for compensation. Sales is going to help you get a job. Sales is going to help you land that date. Sales is going to help you, you know, get what it is that you want. And so you're going to relate with one of these two. Now, the first one, let me go ahead and, and, and share with you an example, right? So when I was growing up, we had these group of girls or even these group of boys, because it doesn't necessarily mean girls, but me being, you know, a male, we typically focus that group within girls and girls could do it too. Girls could focus this group on boys, but this particular group as a whole, boys or girls, they just were scanty. You know what I mean? Like they were fast. They were loose. They didn't care. They were, you know what I mean? They were open. There was like no challenge to get with them, right? Like it was very, very easy. And back in my day, we called, we called this group hood rats. <laughs> For those of you old enough to know what that means, it's basically just a fast group, meaning that they're just ready to go. It's okay. They're lay downs. And the reason why I bring that up is because our consumers, there's this specific group which is kind of like that, like they're okay. Because consumers as a whole, we we as consumers, right? And this is empathy. We are constantly being asked to do something. And so when, let, me, let me give you an example. So as you go out through your day, you know, if you've ever paid attention to the marketing, the coupon ads, the offers, the emails, the banner ads, uh, spam mail, we're constantly being pitched something, right? So we are constantly being asked of something and so this is consumers and so why this group of hood rats was kind of like that is because they were always constantly being asked of something as teenagers what do we do as teenagers right we want to hook up we want to we want to scam right we want to make out we want to get with each other and this is just the truth of it all and so and so at the end of the day like some of us as consumers we're hood rats like we'll take it we're okay with it we you know what i mean we're a lay down like ooh, you mean like i can get i could <laughs> i can get this deal no problem i could get that car for this payment i want it right they're just very easy and so those are the consumer hood rats and there's a lot of them right 
However, there's another niche of, of, of consumers who are more protective, right? And these are the people with stronger credit, whereas the hood rats got bad credit. They got massive amount of debt. Um, they finance everything. Like they're trying to, they're just out to, to take advantage of whatever deal, whatever offer, and, and they buy at a moment's notice. They're instinctual buyers, right? They're habitual buyers. They, they finance everything. And so you'll see people with thirty, eighty thousand dollars in debt, and those typically are credit hood rats. Now, the other set of consumers are the more kind of uh, uh, frugal type, right? They're, these are the people that want to save themselves for marriage type shit, or save themselves for someone special. And so, what they do, what you find their ha their uh, characteristics are, is that maybe they don't have any debt, or they got one credit card, but they pay it off every single month. And you know, they're very selective with who they choose, and they have it refinanced in damn near three, four, five years. And so, they're very selective. They're very methodical. These are the smartest ones. And so in short, that's pretty much the group of the consumers that we deal with. We got hood rats and we got we got smart consumers, right? Either way, as consumers as a whole, regardless of what group that they're in, we as salesmen are asking them for things, right? We're always kind of asking something from them. So we're expecting something from them. Now you are gonna follow, you're gonna fall into one of the two. And one of these two, you gotta be like, oh, that's like me. <laughs> and so that's the game, right? So the first set is is basically the set of, of, of salesmen who look at these two groups, regardless if they're hood rats or regardless if they're frugal and they're methodical consumers who are, are very conservative, you are looking at both and approaching them both the same way. And that particular way is asking. Like you're asking from some, for something from them. And I want you to pay attention to your delivery. Pay attention to your wording. Pay attention to the way you present your pitch and ask for your sale. Are you asking? So, so, so from the very beginning of the phone conversation, you could be very well asking like, Hey, can I interest you in cash out or, or hey, are you in the market to refinance or are you in the market to buy this new gadget or gadget gizmo or gadget, right? Whatever it is you sell. Um, you know, are you, are you interested in A, B and C, right? That's asking. So this particular group of salesmen, you're going to notice that they do not earn as much as the top producers. And I'm going to tell you why, because the second group is typically where the top producers are found. So understanding the dynamics of consumers, where even though that, you know, the salesmen, you're going to get the people who are, are askers, the salesmen who ask for something, ask for a sale, ask for compliance, ask for commitment. Those salesmen will still make sales because why? Because some consumers are just hood rats. They just want whatever shiny new object you got and they're okay with it. Yeah, here's my social. Let me finance that, right? I can't afford it. I'm living beyond my means. Let me get two, right? And so that's just the way it is. However, there's another set of, of uh, salesmen. And, and first off, if that's like you, you just got to admit, boo boo. You got to be self aware and be like, oh, yeah, I am asking for the sale. And if so, then you got to say it. You got to say, hey, man, D, that's like me. Don't forget to comment below and say, hey, that's like me. I'm, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm asking. And uh, don't forget to like and share this video with someone else because if you find yourself in that group, I want to help you transition to the next group because the next group is going to be the one that closes regardless of what group the consumers are in, whether they're whether they're uh, frugal or they're conservative or they're just the neighborhood hood rats. And so these particular type of salesmen, they don't ask. What they do is they they're more focused on bringing value. Get it? Completely different approach. Completely different. And so why they are more effective is because they understand that consumers are already being asked of so many things. You know, when you when you drive down the street and you see, you know, for sale ads, that's that's this that's the store asking for you to come in, right? They're at marketing, commercials, um, you know, uh, Facebook ads, right? These are things that are asking for you to push a button. They're asking for you to learn more. They're asking for you to uh, apply. And so, and so consumers are always being asked what, what the, the latter half or the second half group of salesmen, why they're so effective is because they understand the science of not asking for the sale, but serving value. And if you learn how to serve value, the sale just happens by itself because, because it's the difference of asking for a sale, because when you're asking, you're blindly going about your business. You're just, you're kind of a, you're kind of like the waiter or the waitress, you know, whether you're a boy or girl, because you're asking, what would you like today? 
<laughs> right? Right? Like there's a difference. Some waiters and some waitresses, they recommend, they suggest. And you're going to notice that those, you know, sometimes they influence you. Like, oh man, I was, I, you know, I did come in for the duck, but you know what I mean? Like you made the chicken wing sound real good. Let me get some of that. And so, and so, you know, depending on, on what kind of, uh, uh, service you you are looking for, right? So again, some people are just influenced very easily. They they just they lay down. They're the neighborhood hood rats. But some people are very adamant on what they want, and those are the more frugal, more conservative group type consumers. But the second half, the the serve the servers, right? The servers. I know it sounds different because you'd be thinking like, but wait, a waiter and a waitress they serve your meal. No, they don't. Who serves the meal is the chef right and if you really think about it like chefs are the reason why you go to a particular restaurant they're the reason why you go to you know a, a particular steakhouse there's a reason why you go to Ruth's Chris versus Sizzler even though Sizzler got even though they both got the same products like you go to Sizzler because you know what I mean like you maybe you want to save a couple bucks but you know damn well the quality the the memory the ambiance the experience is much different than if you went to a place like Roots Chris or Mastro's right you go there because of the quality and so we are all technically chefs and it's just a matter of whether or not you know you we understand what the consumers want and so if you if you can identify and understand what it is that the consumers want then you get to serve value you get to serve solutions and that's much more effective than asking for the sale so i hope that this video helps you because either one you're going to fall in one or the other and i want you to really admit like hey d that's like me comment below let me know which one is like you and own up to it because if you're asking for business if you're an asker uh if you're a waiter or a waitress right like it's okay because you know what i mean the first step is admitting to the problem right that's the very first step in solving the problem is just admitting where you're at and if you could own it and step into the habit of of being more of a server like i'm serving value i'm serving solutions i'm giving you value right that's way different than the marketing ads the pitches the the facebook ads whatever it is that's constantly asking and that's so much different because then you sound different and your approach is different and you're going to attract because people are attracted to different things because it stands out from everything else so i hope that that helps you because that's one important hack that could really help unlock your full potential don't forget to comment below don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe follow hit that notification bell for more notifications, share the video link so someone else can play this game. And if you haven't already, go to salesremaster.com. I'll have my team leave a link below this video so you can request a copy of the sales script absolutely free and you can learn more about me and learn more about the, the, the resources and the training uh, courses that I have online that's been helping salespeople all across the country reach that next level. I look forward to meeting, meeting you and working with you. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.